Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Chris Um, and I'd like to welcome you to a conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. Uh, today, I'm honored to be able to to broadcast this radio program from Ireland itself, from the home of of Santara and her family who support this this broadcast to support all of these conversations by their their generosity and their kindness and their service to others. And that includes all of us who are listening and all of us who are speaking as well. So I would like to say thank you, uh, Santara and John, Jonathan and Emma, here in the county of Kerry, in the kingdom of Kerry, in the in the uh, in the country of Ireland. And, and I'm going to turn it over to Amelia. Hello, Krim. It's lovely to be speaking with you here across the sky, which is a big change to the usual show where I'm in Ireland and he's in California. So welcome to Ireland. And it's really good to be here. And it's enough for me and for John to have you to have your presence with us. So I'll begin as usual and I will make a few announcements. The first one I would like to make today is about where you can go if you would like to make a donation to support Kundalini Awakening Systems on all the venues that um, this information is given. If you go over to www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com, you will see that there is a donate button there and you can donate um, and support this program. Um, again, I would like to welcome Chris, and I will make that announcement again later in the show, Chris, and with me. Thank you, Amelia. Uh, yeah, it's a real honor to be here in Ireland. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. We've been out uh, uh, communing and, and visiting with some of the ancient ancient megalithic standing stones that are just with walking distance from Amelia's house. Absolutely gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous and very, very informative. Today's show, however, is about Kundalini and the Koshas. Yet before I get into that, I would like to say that one can see this information at one.com. This is Glenn Ola's uh, Kundalini Awakening Systems 1.com website that he designed and he manages. And I want to pu- put a, a thank you out there to Glenn Ola. One can also uh, receive the video aspects of this information from the YouTube work. And on YouTube, you just need to search out Chrisum Kundalini and it will all come up. There are about uh, currently about 290 or 286, something like that. Uh, videos for you to partake of. I've already taken 10 videos while I've been in Ireland, and so as soon as I get home, I will be uploading those uh, to the uh, YouTube site. Uh, they won't let me do it when I'm in a foreign country. They think, you know, somebody's trying to hack my account, and so, you know, if I could upload them right now, I would. Uh, so, um, there's there's quite a bit happening. It's a very beautiful place, and and uh, to 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 be with Kundalini awakened people is such a blessing. It can be it can feel to the Kundalini awakening person such a kind of a lonely existence, as as some of you know, when you're not able to commune or communicate or or interact with Kundalini awakened people, you feel kind of like an outcast in society, even with all the grace and all the blessings that that come to you through the Kundalini. <coughs> Excuse me. And so it's a real blessing to be here with 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 uh Centaur and her family. And uh, you know, may this happen again ASAP, in my opinion. So I feel really, really blessed to be here and it's an honor to be here sitting next to, to uh Amit Centara. Um if one has a an issue about Kundalini uh, syndrome, one can go to Kundalini uh, to Kundalini Healing on the Yahoo Groups network. It's just called Kundalini Healing. Or on the Facebook network, which is also called Kundalini Healing. Uh, the, the communities that we have on Facebook are the uh, Kundalini Awakening Exclamation Point, Kundalini Awakening Systems 2, Kundalini Healing. Those are all public groups 
I also have pi private groups or secret groups so that uh, anonymity as much as can be had through Facebook is also available for people. Uh, and so, and the the uh, the Yahoo group Kundalini Awakening System One is also a private group, as much as Yahoo mm -hmm. networks will allow that to be to be had. We're also on Google Plus under the name, which may surprise you, Kundalini Awakening Systems. Uh, so, I'd like to invite anybody who's coming to this right now or in the archives uh, to to check out those sources and really begin to fill yourself with kundalini information. Knowledge is power within the kundalini awakening experience. Um, so let, let us begin. Kundalini and koshas. A kosha is like a sheath around a person. And uh, the, the, the uh, strict Hindu interpretation of a kosha would be like a sheath uh, around the person that there's five of them and and uh, you know these sheaths a person has to work through as they as they begin their alignment process well I am not a strict uh, Hindu uh, source to be well I honor the Hindu religion it's a beautiful wonderful religion I really honor it and I and I think that it it, it works well for many many people there in India and here in the in the here in the UK, but also in Ireland, the United States, you know, there's a great level of appreciation for the Hindu belief system. But I don't come from that. I was not raised with that. It's not something. Uh, actually, no religions have ever really attracted me, and I tried as many as I could find. Certainly, uh, before the second awakening for me in this body. But as the second awakening did come. I was given the information about how all all uh, religions really lead to the Kundalini awakening, and once the Kundalini awakening has occurred, well, then then you really get to to uh, see how interconnected and how 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 once you cross that threshold into the Kundalini awakening, how unnecessary it is to continue along the line of a belief system, uh, how necessary it can be to begin to open to the divine source within you. And this leads me straight into uh, the koshas. My interpretation of the koshas are that they are not separate from the divine force that the kundalini awakens within us. Matter of fact, uh, um, Oro Bindu, uh, they put Sri in front of his name, S R I S R I Oro Bindu, uh, was was Kundalini awakened. He has this big center in India, and uh, he, you know, without me knowing it, he also uh, feels the same way about the koshas and how uh, the koshas are aspects of. Uh, what we need to work through to come into greater understanding of the divine within us. But it is divine force that is the power. It is the divine force that allows us to even come into an understanding of the koshas. The koshas can be seen as expressions that are related to the chakra system. You have a physical kosha, you have an emotional kosha, you have, uh, you know, uh, Koshas for cosmological uh, uh, influences. You have koshas uh, for communication with 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 self, with the uh, with the kundalini, with the divine, and all these koshas really, you know, they're basically lesson plans for a person to to work through. It's not like shucking a, a corn, you know. It's not like you know pulling the sheath off of a corn. Uh, you have to carefully work through a kosha. So, for instance, the emotional kosha. You really need to begin to change how you relate to yourself on an emotional level. Do you understand? Change how you are on an emotional level. Begin to flow with the divine force of the kundalini awakening within you. And change how you respond and how you relate to others on emotional levels. 
it is something that you will have to do. It is something that you will have to complete. Otherwise, the kosher will, the kosher will not become uh, thin enough for you to move into the next sheath into the next level of refinement that the person needs to partake of as they begin to walk this kundalini awakening path. Now, I tell you, I tell you, the the Vedics are all going to just throw their arms up and go, oh, that chrism, oh, my God, don't listen to him. He's just going to pollute your mind with all this nonsense about his interpretation of koshas. And yet... And yet, you know, I see validation through the actual people who are Kundalini Awakened, Sri Aurobindo being one. Uh, many, many of the uh, of, of the great scholars of the Vedics, the great scholars uh, of, of metaphysicians throughout the Western uh, uh, the Western understandings, you know, these great scholars aren't Kundalini Awakened. You know, they. They put their time in the books, and they've gone through their rituals, and they've got a nice beard, and they've got, you know, a, a really cool hairdo, maybe, and they wear those beautiful, beautiful saffron robes, but they're not Kundalini awakened. They don't, they don't know. They don't understand. They're able to interpret books of, of the rishis, to the degree that they think they understand them. They're able to, to go into the Bhagavad Gita or the Bible or the, the you know, any of the sacred um, writings that are, you know, scattered throughout the world, the I Ching, etc. They're able to go in there and they're able to go pull out, you know, these, these morsels of wisdom, but they're not Kundalini Awakening. And I have to say that only because Kundalini Awakening gives you a different level of information. A very, very different level of communication and information. You need to understand this. You know, you'll have you'll have uh, you know great seers and great uh, teachers of the Satana system or the 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 Vedic, the many different Vedic systems, the many different uh, Hindu based systems, the many different. Uh, yogas and meditation and tantric systems and you know the uh the the rosicrucians and the masons and all of these you know uh systems that are based in the egyptian mystery schools but if they're not kundalini awakened they're not getting the information they're still operating from from the control of the ego and they're not really understanding that they too have to work on their koshas, on their on the on the sheaths that surround them, the sheaths that that are there to continue the cocoon of grace that the Kundalini awakened person also needs to be aware of and also needs to, to take the steps to work through. The difference being is that while you have an ego-based, uh, uh, you know, professor emeritus of Vedic systems, you know, they're only really as good as their ego is going to allow them to be. Whereas when you have an awakened ditch digger or <laughs> a homeless person, such as I've been, uh, you know, you have this amazing expanded level of, of information that that does not uh, does not often coincide with levels of ego based information that those who are dependent upon books and writings and and the interpretations of people that have gone before them uh, have. Kundalini is a living force of information within you, and as I mentioned at the beginning, information is power within your Kundalini awakening uh, expression within, within that. Asian within you, your information is power. Now I'm I'm constantly, constantly tied into my Kundalini these days. After the New York seminar, I had so much bliss. I just cannot tell you how much bliss I had. I talked to some of the people that were there. Uh, well, Amelia Santara was there. Amelia, was I having any kind of bliss at the uh, seminar? 
Yes, because you have less cousins in the less in Ireland. And yes. you've had some dreams in Ireland while the state, you know. It dreams. can be embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> and it can be wonderful to be in the presence of that too, because you can feel it. Um, so, it's just, you know, I've been very blessed to have to have witnessed that, you know. So, thank you. Thank you, Amelia. And, and when you have this bliss, it's like sticking your head into a ray of sun. And this sun carries with it this amazing level of divine merging. And it's that merging that causes the bliss to happen, but it also causes more information to come. And as, as my equation continues to go, just as yours, you who are listening, even those who are not activated yet, you're listening to this equation and this information, this kundalini travels on my voice and it's traveling into your ear right now for any of you who are listening. Speaking of which, I'd like to welcome uh, Fash G to the show and and. I, I'm sure many of you remember his gorgeous, absolutely velvety, deep voice calling in over the telephone. This guy is like, he's like genetically designed to be on the radio. <laughs> you have a great force in your voice, my friend. And Celestial Rubies, which is Julie. Julie, good to see you. I hope that double scatter field is working for you. And then we have the, the various guests that are, their, their numbers, 1749, 1879, 1931, and 2017, I'd like to welcome you all to the program. And also to the to those who are, are going to be checking us out in the, in the archives later on. Uh, with, with these koshas, the kundalini awakened person is wrapped in a, a sheath of what we would refer to as the five bodies of human expression. So this is where the, the Vedics get the five koshas. Five koshas can be seen as the, the five bodies of human expression and how we need to learn how to move through each body in such a way that it complements our kundalini awakening process. So let's just use, let's go back to the emotional body. You need to learn how to begin to allow the kundalini to express through you and through your emotional kosha so that you're able to, to become familiar with it, you're able to acclimate to, to the force of a sun extending its ray through your heart. And I'm just talking to you about bliss, and I, I want you to really begin to to get comfortable with that term because it's a real thing and it really does. It, it, it sometimes it freezes me in my tracks and, and you're just you're just brought to tears immediately. It is not tears of pain; it is tears of joy, and yet are tears. People looking at you think you're crying. Okay, they'll stop the car. Are you okay? <laughs> Can I help you? Such sweet people we have in this world here, especially in Ireland. And just the, the people of Ireland and New York. Absolutely top-notch, top-rate, wonderful, beautiful, sweet, caring individuals, all of them. I love you all. And as we work on our emotional kosha, we work on our forgiveness. We work on our tolerance. We, look, we work on our emotional patience. We work uh, to allow the love, the divine love, to flow through us into our lives and into the lives of those we interact with. You know, I have the I have the real pleasure of of seeing uh, Amelia with her family. I see how 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 uh, uh, her and and her husband John uh, relate to their children, relate to other people. And of course, you know, when you're in Ireland, they've got this really interesting way of talking that it seems designed to confuse Americans. <laughs> you know, I mean it's. It's it's not the, the leprechauns talk on TV from Hollywood. I just you know I I was shocked. It's, you know they they use words and they they put a slide on words. I I was talking to a guy on the phone today and he picked up the phone and he just said like maybe five words and I had to hand the phone over to Amelia because I had no clue what he was saying. <laughs> and he was speaking English. It was just 
you know, with that really, really beautiful melodious brogue that I have no idea what they're saying. And so, but it's, it's been a real pleasure to see how she interacts with her children, how she interacts with other people, how she's patient, how she's caring, how she tolerates, you know, little things that are coming this way and that, and how she tolerates, you know, the, the instructions I give her in the middle of, you know, her life, you know, how she, <laughs> how she tolerates you know, all because I, you know, for those of you who who have had the experience of, of learning about the Kundalini from me, I'm not an easy teacher. Yeah, I know, I know that it, that the grace that 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 flows through me would give the you know anybody an idea. Oh, you know, he might be an easy teacher. Well, it's just not true, is it? Amanda? It's not true. <laughs> <laughs> He's easy and hard at the same time. <laughs> You know, really, you can be, you can be hard, yeah. I mean, Absolutely. it must be said. Absolutely. I mean, and, and it is true. I mean, what good is a teacher who can't be hard? Kundalini teaches us some extremely hard lessons, lessons, and this is why I wanted to bring up koshas in this program, because all five bodies of the human expression, all five koshas, have difficult parts to them. I'm not even talking about the granthi knots, which are also, you know, mixed into the equation as well. So the physical kosha. The physical kosha is all about you coming into balance with your physical body. Are you overweight? Are you under-exercised? Are you, you know, staring at the computer, you know, computer and watching porn every act, you know, every time you can? <laughs> what are you doing? What do you do with your day? How much sunlight do you let your eyes partake? How much fresh air do you allow your lungs to inhale? How much of the prana of, of, a, of a beautiful early morning do you allow your body to partake of? What are you doing with your physical body? What are you eating? Are you eating, you know, organic uh, rice cakes with chocolate covered all over them? Doesn't sound like a bad idea, actually. <laughs> Are you eating McDonald's hamburgers that like have been proven not to decompose for ten years? What are you eating? What are you putting into your physical kosha? What are you doing, and why are you doing it? Now, I can understand if it's a monetary issue. You know, I am poor to this day right now. Uh, I understand that sometimes you cannot afford organic food because it, it, it is just too expensive. It's too expensive, and it, it can be very hard to come by uh, in, the, uh, you know, in the cities. In, like I was in, uh, as you know, I was in New York City uh, lately, and, and frankly, you know, you just, <laughs> Amelia and I are walking on Broadway, and we're seeing all these vendors of this and restaurant of that, and you walk into one, and there's just nothing organic there. You just have to you have to give in to the lay of the land, and so I understand. I understand for those of you that that may be monetarily challenged, you can't eat as well as as you may as you may want to. And and you know I'm certainly not putting a judgment off on you. Certainly not doing that. But I would. You can make it up in other areas. You can get outside and exercise. You can get out and breathe that early morning air, that prana loaded air. You can get into the sunshine, okay? You can do many things that can help offset the levels of toxicity that exist in the food that the United States produces in other countries, okay? You can do that. The Kundalini is strong enough that if you're, if you're within a certain position in, in the financial world where where you can't afford good food, you can't afford to grow your good food, well, then get other forms of energetic uh, nutrition within you. And, and this is what I'm talking about with regards to the physical kosha, the physical body. Get the sunlight. Get the fresh air. Get the exercise. Do the meditation outside. Do the prayer work outside. Do the five Tibetans outside. When I was... When I first discovered the five Tibetans and I was kind of in the middle of my uh, awakening equation, not really clearly knowing what it was or what to do or anything like that, 
I knew intuitively that the five Tibetans were a good thing. And, uh, you know, the, the, the Kundalini was communicating that to me. And so I was living in a trailer out in the middle of, of, of the countryside uh, in Northern California. And, and uh, Amelia told me today that the Irish people have a very strong prejudice against anybody that does anything in a trailer. I just look at that and I'm just amazed because I've lived most of my life in a trailer. You know, if there is, if you know, I think I qualify for the term trailer trash, but I'm going to give it a Kundalini spin. I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a trailer park guru, or a trailer park Kundalini teacher. The 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 fact of shelter is the most important thing, really. A place, safe place to sleep, play, a safe place to cook food and to shower and to be within four walls. Even if it's just two inch thick or one and a half inch four walls, they're there. We need to really move away, uh, you know, from our judgments of people who live in something other than a brick and mortar domicile. And this kind of ties into our conversation that we had last week about judgment. Uh, Trailers are absolutely okay. They're wonderful. And I'll tell you what. I live in California. I live in Northern California. I live seven fault lines, earthquake-laden fault lines. And we have earthquakes all the time in Northern California. And there is no place I would rather be than in a trailer with tires and shock absorbers in an earthquake uh, than in a trailer. I mean, I would prefer to be in that trailer, and I think anybody else would be too. Because all it's going to do is just move you side to side. They're made. They're made to withstand the road. And the road for a trailer is just a really long earthquake. You know, you get the brick and mortars. They're falling down all over people. They're hurting people. They're killing people. But the trailers aren't doing that. So a trailer better be a saving grace, a beautiful place to be. And, and I support any of you that are into your airstreams or your or your your uh your Shastas and your Fleetwoods and, you know, all of these American brands of, uh, of, uh, of trailer. I have a Spartan and a Dolphin and things of that nature. So trailers are really good, and they, they're very effective in helping the physical body, the physical kosha, survive in a, a challenged financial uh, environment. And I, you know, I, hold, I, have, I, I do not hold any judgment. People that have brick or mortar or trailers or live in their cars or live under an overpass. Uh, certainly, if you're living under under an overpass, you get that fresh air in the morning. <laughs> you get a lot of it. <laughs> you get a lot of sunlight. You, you have an opportunity to partake of energies that are crucial to the person who's having a kundalini awakening and how it's affecting the physical body. Physical kosha is one of the most important uh, uh, koshas that you're going to move through. That you're, you're going to hear some ice dropping in the refrigerator here. We're not having an earthquake here. In our, I just want you to know that. <laughs> so the physical kosha is extremely important, and I want you to take a look at how you're treating it. How much of your you know, lethargy is based in negative programming that is coming from the computer that is coming from the television, that is coming from the cinema, that is coming from your friends, your family, your church, your school, your newspaper. I would ask you to take that programming out of your system and allow the physical kosher to get up early, to exercise hard, to work hard, to play hard, to eat hearty. And when I say eat hearty, eat hearty of the foods that you're able to find. Eat hearty of the energies that are coming through the sunlight, the energies that are coming through the starlight, the energies that are coming through prana, you know, like three in the morning, from three to six in the morning, anywhere on this world, the prana is the strongest. Drink that clean water. If you can't afford bottled water, then find the cleanest water you can find and treat your physical kosha appropriately, appropriate to what a divine force would ask you to do it. And this is what the Kundalini is asking you to do. Now, you know, this moves us up to the next kosha. Okay, the kosha 
of the second chakra. This has to do with procreation. This has to do with creativity. This has to do, you know, with the levels of, of fluid that are retained in the body, the levels of salt that are retained in the body, the levels of, of what you have been putting into the first kosha is basically organized and disseminated by the second kosha, the second body. And what are you doing with that? Are you masturbating every day because you're bored? Is that what you're doing? Is that how you're, you're, you're spending those sacred fluids within you that the kundalini will use to, to invigorate the nervous system and to form a collaborative plasma with divine kundalini god? Is this what you're doing? Activating every day just because you're bored? Just because your you know, your society is pumping out pornography to your face, you know, over and over and over again through commercial television, through through Broadway plays, through the cinemas, through through any of the many, many, many outlets of of uh, of the media that we have? Is this how you treat the sacred feminine within you? Whether you're a man or a woman, is this how the sacred feminine gets treated? Sometimes the Kundalini will will hyper express your second kosha, your second body. You won't be able to not have sex, but that's that's in the realm of Kundalini. That's not the Kundalini going, okay, ego, have at it. That's the Kundalini taking over the control of the second kosha and the first kosha and allowing and you allowing the kundalini to dominate those areas in you. Because are very, very, very important, not only before you having a kundalini awakening, which is the refinement process, but after you have the kundalini awakening, after it has come up in you, you're still working on them. You're working on how the new body, the new body that is being built, is going to work for you. How you're going to express through it. How it's going to express through you. Think about this. You know, everybody is, you know, we all hear, you know, from from that, you know, many various sources. That, oh, cleaning is this great transformation. You know, great this, great. Well, yeah, it is a transformation. But what then? It doesn't just go back to being controlled by the ego, does it? The divine begins to have a merged control over more than half of your systems. It allows the ego the illusion of control because this is how we communicate on this world. This world is controlled by egos all the time. It's control, it is controlled by certain levels of illusion. The Kundalini knows this, and it allows this illusion, this illusion to continue for as long as the individual needs to partake of it. But, but, you know, it will shorten that rope considerably. It will shorten that illusion considerably. So once the transformation is taking place, other arrangements are being made in how you are going to express and how the divine forces are going to express through you. This is through the thinning of the koshas. Okay, the kundalini will thin the koshas. Thinning the koshas is the equivalent of refining the five-body human system. What are you doing? With your second kosher, with your second chakra, how are you being creative? How are you being procreative? How are you treating that area of your of your kundalini awakening equation? How much salt are you eating? How much water are you drinking? Are you drinking a lot of caffeine? Are you smoking? What are you doing that is going to to impact the second kosher, the second body? of the human system. And how, and if you're doing all these things, what are you going to do to correct it? Are you going to stop drinking alcohol? Are you going to stop uh you know drinking uh you know artificially flavored colas? Are you going to stop drinking things like like artificial uh diet type sodas uh you know you have a one that says and with the I'll say the N word and then sweet after that. You have one that comes in a pink package. You have one that comes in a blue package. You know, what are you going to do? How are you going to change your life? And I want you to take, to take the time 
to discern what changes you need to make in your life, wherever it is in your life. It's all going to affect your koshas. It's all going to affect the sheaths that determine how you're going to mature in a spiritual evolutionary sense. Amelia, how do you feel about it? <laughs> it's so unfair. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, first of all, I didn't really know what coaches were. I hadn't come across the term before, but as you begin to speak, I understand what they are um, as you're explaining them. Um, and it is, I've been, yeah, I, Chris, I can't speak. Can Can you excuse me? <laughs> See, I told you, I told you I was a hard teacher. <laughs> I'm listening and I'm absorbing, and, and when I'm taking it in and you suddenly ask me a question, I find it quite difficult to stop and, and, and speak out, so excuse me. That's oh, quite all right. It's, I, I, I totally expected that to be the case. I totally, no worries, no worries. Um, I see Rosemary's on the line here, too. Rosemary, hello, my dear. Hello. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Uh, right now, of course, it is... Uh, it is uh, 20 minutes to 12 midnight in Ireland, but I also know that it's just it's 20 minutes to four on the West Coast, and I believe with with Rosemary it's uh, 20 minutes to seven, I think, or eight. Uh, so the koshas are are exceptionally important. They actually serve as a sheath. They actually serve as a form of filtration that allows you the time and a mechanism for refinement to take place. But here's the thing. Here's the caveat. Now you know. For any of you that are listening to this, all three of you, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. (laughs) For any of you that are listening to this, uh, you have the information, and by having the information, you are also accepting a certain level of responsibility. Mm. And that was, you know, you know, information isn't free. Mm-hmm. You, you have the information, and now you have the responsibility to fulfill the, the, the clarity that that information is giving you. I want to make that really clear. Uh, and so, what are you doing with your second and first kosha? And your second kosha, you know, cut back on the salt if you're like eating out at fast food places all the time, and you're just dumping loads of salt on your food. Cut back on that. Cut back on that. Okay. If, if you're if you're if you're not drinking enough water, increase the amount of water that you drink. If you, find the cleanest water source you can find. I don't. I would prefer that that if if you're going to buy water, then you know. Buy water in bulk, you know, get one of those big glass, you know, uh, three-gallon bottles of water and, you know, dump it upside down in that little uh, dispenser and have your water that way. Um, If you can, if you can. If you can't, it's it's quite all right to get whatever water source you can get. But, you know, we... The societies today, the Western technological societies, have deemed it that, well, we need to dump fluoride into our water. We need to dump chlorine into our water. And the pipes that we're using, you know, have have plenty of toxins within them, everything from arsenic to benzene, you name it. We don't really need to toxify our water this way. But, you know, big business drives it, you know, and, and one of the big business for the for the fluoride is the dentist's industry. Now I have a great dentist. I love him. He's a great guy. He's uh, he's in Ronard Park, and uh, and uh, I would recommend many people to to go see him. He's a straight up guy, but you know all he can see is whether or not the fluoride is helping people not have dental caries, and he you know he's not really looking at the environmental impact dumping huge toxins into the into the environment. He's just looking at it from a dentist standpoint. And what I'm gonna Suggests is that as you buy your water, look into what is happening. Are you buying water in plastic bottles? And what's happening to that plastic bottle after you're finished with the water? Do you just throw it away? What's going on? Where's your level of responsibility to the earth, 
to Mother Shock. Okay. Look at that. Really begin to expand your awareness into how you benefit the different koshas in your body. How you you're nurturing and, and, and what is the impact beyond your own particular kosha, your own particular body. What are you doing? And why are you doing it? And what impact does it have? You know, in the ocean, there's this huge island uh, that's been created through the different tides. I, I, I think it's somewhere in the Pacific Ocean. And it's an entire island that's made out of plastic bottles. Plastic this, plastic that. It's huge. It's huge. And it's this this conglomeration of, I'm not sure that's a word. <laughs> Forgive me if it isn't. It's this huge collection of plastic bottles, plastic shoes, rubber duckies. I mean, anything that's spilled out of a container ship that's plastic and floats, well, it collects there. And it and it's it's an amazing thing. And, and you know, seabirds can get caught in those plastic rings that hold six back together, et cetera, et cetera, and so forth. So really begin to look at how you feed your koshas, how you treat your koshas, and how that treatment affects the outside environment. Because I'll tell you what, it's the outside environment that is going to determine how your koshas are going to be nurtured, how your koshas are going to be allowed to flourish or not. Those of you who live in the cities, you know, the great cities of uh, New York City or Boston or Miami or Los Angeles, San Francisco, Denver, uh, Dublin, London, Paris, Besançon. I mean, these are really, really huge cities, and they have uh, levels of toxicity just in the air that you breathe. As you open your window, toxic dust will blow into your house and into your lungs. And so I want you to look at that. Do what you can do. I'm not saying leave the cities. I'm saying do what you can do to maintain a fresh air source, a good, wholesome, healthy, fresh air source, so that your kosha, whatever kosha that that fresh air affects, is going to be helped, is going to be assisted, is not going to be turned against it or to begin to attack uh, another one of the sheaths that are that are part of your kundalini equation. It's important for you to begin to look at this. Don't poison yourself, is what I'm saying. Don't suck on that cancer stick. I don't care what kind of a brief moment of satisfaction you get. Stop it. You know. You know this. This is coming from my kundalini. Do not do this. Now, it doesn't mean that if you keep doing it that all is lost. But it does mean that if you keep doing it, you know, a lot can be lost. A lot of it's going to depend on your karma, too. But if you're, if you're consciously poisoning yourself, what does that tell you about your feelings about the divine force that is coming through you? What does that tell you about your level of love for the kundalini within you? What does that tell you about your level of discipline? What does it tell you about your level of, of grace under fire? We create karma not just by the activities that we do to other people. We create karma by the activities that we inflict upon ourselves, too. Imagine being born with a disease that doesn't allow you to take a deep breath. Imagine what that might feel like. Imagine what an early onset of emphysema without any kind of a smoking scenario uh, it feels like. My grandmother, she died of uh, emphysema at the age of 58 in Santa Rosa, California. I remember her opening up that strange little purse that had her cigarette pack and lighter in it, and I always wondered, well, you know, what an odd purse to have. And she'd open that up, and it looked like a big fish to me. And, you know, she'd take it out, and she, you know, she'd just smoke away, smoke, 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 smoke. I forget what brand she was smoking, but she'd smoke a lot. <laughs> and, of course, I'd be in all the secondhand smoke, as many children, as many children in our country and in our world do. I'm going to suggest that you do your best to begin to, to clean up the toxins. Put in your second, second 
body. Because I tell you what, the liver and the kidneys that that are part of that second body, that second chakra, and that liver's got to detoxify all the poisons you dump into it. Stop dumping into it. It is not a landfill. Your liver is not a landfill. It is not a dump. Please, please, my friend. Take out as many toxins as you can. And certainly don't put toxins in your body for just the the strength of the uh, of the uh, limited pleasure that it may give you. And if you're gonna say for 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 uh, tobacco, if you're gonna smoke tobacco, smoke real tobacco. Take the plant, dry the leaves, roll it up, and smoke that tobacco. Have a relationship with that plant, just like many of the shamans do in South America, Central America, and in the Southern uh, North American continent. You know, have that relationship with the tobacco itself. Forget about the benzene. Forget about saltpeter. Forget about the, the, the tiny... Uh, uh, shards of uh, of the filter that when you inhale, you know, impacts your lungs. Forget about those things. You know, the only thing you really have done as best you can, clean it up as best you can. I have nothing against smokers. A lot of Kundalini awakened people have have the cigarette scenario going on. A lot of them. I'm happy to talk here, folks. Uh, you know, many of my friends are smokers. Many of my students are smokers, and I've got no problem. I love them all. I love you all deeply. And part of my love for you is to say to you that, hey, 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 you know what a kosha is? You know what it does? You know how important it is to your kundalini awakening equation? You need to begin to take care of those koshas, of the bodies of expression. Okay? Take care of them. And so the liver and the kidneys and the adrenals, these are part of that second kosha, the third kosha. The kosha of of the lobes of the lung, the lower lobes of the lung, of the thymus, you know, of many of the ductless uh, endocrine system-based glands. This is your connection to the, to the cosmos. This is your connection to the sacred male. This is that force of it within you, the top of the first pyramid within the body. How do you honor the sacred male in your life? How do you honor the levels of energy that are coming in through the sun, through the many, many, many frequencies that that comprise sunlight? How much time do you spend under fluorescent lights? And I, I get it. I get it. You, you have to go to work. And most of the work lights are going to be fluorescent lights, you know, and they got that 60 cycle hum and, you know, they flicker on and they flicker off and you don't even, you, your your eyes and your brain, your brain will record all of it, but your eyes, you know, begin to be, to be uh, acclimated to that flicker, that constant on and off, on and off, on and off at a hyper, at a hyper frequency that, that allows the eyes to, to see more of the light than the dark. But the brain, the brain will get both of it. Okay. How much time do you spend under those those qualities of light, those frequencies of light? How much time do you spend under the stars? How much time do you spend with moonlight? How much time do you spend looking at sunlight sparkling on a body of water, like an ocean or a lake or a river or a mud puddle? How much time do you see visions of snow and the sparkle of the snow and the sunlight? And I'm not asking you to go out and get snow blind. That's not, I'm not asking you that. <laughs> you can wear your, your sunglasses and you can still see that sparkle. It won't hurt you. How much time do you do that? How much time do you enjoy the the sparkle of a gem ring, a ring that uh, Amelia and I, you know, we 
as, uh, in our travels lately, you know, we're, we're going through uh, uh, New York City and and we're going up into New Jersey with Jake and Eleonora. Hello, Jake and Eleonora. We're going up through there and we're looking at different levels of sacred red or sacred blue. And, and we're looking and, 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 uh, and exploring for that, just that right frequency. And I got to tell you, Amelia found it. She found the most beautiful sacred blue ring you'll ever see, and and she's wearing it right now. Oh, my gosh. I can sit here and look at it and have this. It's an amazing quality. And how much time do you, my friends, do you look at the sparkle of frequencies that the sun provides on a beautiful colored gemstone? I don't care what color it is. I'd prefer for you to look at uh, red and blue. I don't know if I discussed that before on, the, on, on these programs, but a red gemstone that is scintillating in the light, and I mean a dark, dark, ruby red gemstone. You look at it, uh, and you allow the sun to light it up, to sparkle it up. And, and, and conversely, you look at a, at a deep, dark, uh, uh, cobalt blue cut glass uh, faceted stone so that it, it too... Uh, sparkles up and you just you allow your eyes to drink those colors you allow your eyes to drink that sunlight how much time do you spend feeding your eyes how much time do you allowing the yellow burst of the third kosha to be nourished by the sunlight, the starlight, the, the, the music of the spheres, the music of the multiverse. I'd like you to feed your sternum. I'd like you to feed your xiphoid process, for those anatomists out there who know what a xiphoid process is. I'd like you to feed your third kosha. I'd like you to, to make sure that you're getting the appropriate amount of iodine in your system, the appropriate amount of minerals in your system, the appropriate amount of electrolytes in your system so that the body energy can run faster and smoother. And the Nalini can partake of that beautifully balanced and nourished uh, uh, system and increase it exponentially, safely. So that you're not feeling too much pain, you're not feeling lethargy, you're not feeling over amplification. Feed that third kosha, feed that third body, take the time. You even just, you know, split it up, you know, the five days of the week. You know, Monday it's the first kosha, Tuesday the second kosha, Wednesday the third kosha, Thursday the fourth kosha, and Friday the five kosha. You can feed those koshas. Koshas. You can feed those bodies. You can nourish those bodies. You can allow the kundalini to be nourished by your nourishing of the kosha, those sheaths. And as you nourish those koshas, those, those bodies of expression, uh, even before the kundalini comes up, after the kundalini comes up, you still have to nourish those koshas. You just have to learn how to do that. And I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm telling you how to do some of that right now. Even as you nourish, say, the, the third kosha, and you're drinking in the sacred male, what, what part of the awakened anatomy resonates with the sacred male? How are we given within the process of the kundalini into the divine. Well, with the kundalini, it's somewhat of a forceful process. And force is a signature of the male. The male is a protruding force into the divine aspects of who we are. And yet, even even within that protruding force, that, that, that force that inserts itself into your equation, even within that you must surrender to the divine within you. Even as it forces itself into your system, you must surrender. And so a surrendering is a, is a part of allowing in, and that would, of course, be the aspect of the sacred feminine. As above, so below. As below, so above. You get, you see, I mean, there's this, this it's not even a Jacob's ladder, it's a Kundalini ladder. 
and it takes you from its own reflection on the physical uh, five sense world, five sense world, five kosher world. It takes you from there into the the next stage of Kundalini Awakened, which also has aspects and reflections of the five kosher world. And so even as you're in the awakening process, you are once again looking at your koshas, looking at your exalted light bodies, the frequency of the bodies that, that have been awakened through the Kundalini. Well, now you get to work with those. Now you get to work with your the expression of of, of even you know the first three koshas, the first three bodies that were we're looking at the expression of divine infusion of those koshas, and this is where you get a lot of your siddic skills. This is where you get a lot of your you know the optimal health. This is where you get a lot of the wisdom and the information and the kundalini is there to guide you. It will either guide you itself or it will send you to a teacher because it knows you need to hear it from a corporeal uh, person such as myself. Among many, I mean, you know, you know, I'm the only one that I know of that teaches what I teach, but I'm sure somewhere out there there's other people that do it too. Okay. The Kundalini will send you there. The Kundalini will give it to you at the same time that it sends you to another person. You just need to be open to that instruction. Dealing with a kosha within the enlightenment process, the actual enlightenment, i.e. you've already had the awakened, you know, you've had the spinal sweeps, you're, now, now you're dealing with the koshas in a very different way. You're dealing with the koshas in a way that, that no book can help you with. Just the information your kundalini gives you, or the information that the kundalini gives you through the teacher that it feels is best for you. And that includes books. You know, the Kundalini too, the Kundalini may lead you to a book. It will knock the book off the shelf for you to read. It doesn't want you to remain in darkness. It, do, it doesn't want you to in a profound state of ignorance, even after the awakening, after the spinal sweep. Most of the people after the spinal sweeps, well, they're all into the phenomena. You know, the uh, the entities, the kriyas, the waking visions, you know, all of these different things come in and, and we can be inundated and we can be distracted by that phenomena. And if you're coming into the into the spinal sweep, if you're if you're even engaging the Kundalini so that you can have power, well, you know, you're gonna you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna have a, a very surprising experience within the Kundalini. Because it doesn't entertain ego uh, interpretation of the correct use of power very well. It doesn't entertain that at all. Matter of fact, it might enslave you to entities just to get you a little more prepared to understand the correct use of power. You know, Kundalini controls how well. Uh, that would be a fifth kosha, actually. That would be a fifth. And I'm not really skipping the fourth kosha, but I'm just saying the entity interaction is a fifth kosha issue. Okay. Believe me, there are many, many vectors of teaching that the kundalini will give a person pre and after the kundalini uh, spinal sweeps. As you work, uh, the, you know, towards a spinal sweep, you're conditioning the five bodies or the five koshas towards a level of of grace, a level of, of of energy that will open the chakras simultaneously and allow the sacred the sacred shakti to come up to the base of the spine and out the fontanelle at the top of the head. Fontanelle, Latin for fountain, with the attendant two transmediumship channels on either side of it. Lights them up too. So that you have spiritual contact. You have coach conscious spiritual contact. And that's not always the most pleasant thing, but it depends on how well you're taking care of your koshas. And and how your karma 
has determined for your life to be at this time. Okay. We still burn our karma, not burn, we still balance our karma. Even as we're coming into the exalted aspects of the koshas, so the, the thinning of the kosha sheaths around us. Now, many of the Vedic scholars will say, oh, well, you know, the, the, the five koshas, they, they do this, this, they do A, B, and they equal C. And, and the, the Kundalini Awakened people go, well, that's, that's a nice theory, and um, it's a good theory for you to have while you're at that place in your life, in your evolution. But in actuality, it's the divine that controls all koshic activity. It is the divine self that propels a person through the five different levels of kosha activity. It's the divine self that does this. It is not somebody's book. It is not. No, no, you know. You know, I, I was told recently that the greatest seers in, in all the world have all come together and said, a kosha is this. And my kundalini is going, well, isn't that special? But it's really the divine. The divine is working through the kundalini awakened person constantly. And it controls how we work through the koshas. It controls what our karma is and how it influences the way we work through our koshas. Let's, so let's move right into the fourth kosha, the fourth kosha, the love kosha, the seed of the divine is in the heart. Did you know that? The seed of the divine is in the heart. A proper kundalini awakening is a check mark. It's it bounces from the from the fourth to the first, and then up the spine and out the seventh. A check mark, basically. From the fourth to the first, and then up the spine, back into the fourth, and out the top of the head. The divine seed is in the heart. And one of the greatest of the Indian philosophers, uh, Ramana Maharshi, he knew this. Read his words. Read his his work. That man was absolutely fantastic. And he is fantastic because he's Kundalini and Kundalini doesn't just leave. He is part of the divine matrix of all Kundalini awakened people on this world. Just as I am. Just as Amelia is. Just as you. You, you Kundalini awakened people personage listening to this program just as you are and all of those who are who are in the activation sequence and you know at that special time of their life all of all of, of you who are working towards having the kundalini and all of you that have that have the spinal sweep or who've done a lot of astral projection and understand are beginning to understand the unlimited variation of divine influence upon the human system upon the Five koshas. The fourth kosha is the seat of love, is the seat of divine intervention upon the human being on this world. And love is what holds everything together. Love is what controls the frequencies. Love is what allows us even to enter into an evolutionary process. Love, love, not dire. Not wants and needs, but love. Yes, yes, it can be soft and squishy and floating hearts and cotton candy balls floating through the air, sugar plum fairies and fluffy bunnies. It can be all those things too. But it can also be self-sacrifice for someone you don't even know. It can be giving uh, an elderly person a, a dinner, probably the first good dinner that they've had in years because of the amount of neglect that the Western societies push upon their elderly populations. It can be helping that child get up off of the cement and and help them and calm them and comfort them as their as their knee is bleeding. It can be helping that mother just by smiling at her because maybe she's being beat to death 
you know, every time she goes home to her drunken husband. It could be helping that, that person with an alcohol affliction to come through, to come through it, praying for them and supporting them and assisting them. You know, you know, one of the guys that came to the seminar in New York, uh, 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 an exceptionally beautiful person by the name of Adrian, and Jake, they both, Work with people in the in the uh, the twelve uh, step programs, helping people, helping people clean up their koshas, clean up their lives, not just their physical life, but but their fourth kosha, the love of self, the love of others, the compassion of others, the sympathy of others. You notice I didn't say empathy. Okay, don't become an empath. I know it sounds really cool. And, oh, I'm an empath. No. No, don't do that. Be... <laughs> Sorry. Minnie is over here laughing. Um, be a compassionate person. But don't be an empath. All an empath does is take somebody else's pain into your system and, oh, great, now what do I do? Okay. Be a compassionate person. Be a help person. These are also aspects of the fourth kosha. The fourth kosha is so huge. Uh, I could do an entire show on the fourth kosha. Um, I'm going to ask uh, Fashi, would you write to me on the uh, on the uh, uh, chat room there? Am I coming through clearly? Sometimes I never know. <laughs> I could be talking here for over an hour, and it's like nobody's hearing a word I'm saying. So. Uh, Fushy, if you would please let me know uh, whether or not this is coming through. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I'm in a closet staring at a computer, you know, talking to a computer. So please, please let me know if it's coming through okay. The fourth kosha is absolutely instrumental in how we relate to ourselves and how we relate to each other. What did he say? It gets a bit choppy at times. Well, darn. Jeez Louise. Maybe I'll just back up a little bit. How's this, Fasty? I'm backing up a little bit. I'm speaking a little louder. Does this help? I'll wait for you to answer here, but I'll continue as, as I'm... Maybe I'm just getting a little too close to it. You know, I'm like staring at this and... Uh, ah, I see. I apologize, folks, for the choppiness. I should have asked sooner. My bad. I'm going to have to give Amelia something really hard to just as punishment for myself. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <woo -hoo. laughs> um, Julie had commented earlier, actually, um, that if you know, she had said, let me see, going well, thank you. So, um, Not the whole time then. Okay, yeah. very good. Thank you. Thank you. I know. I got to hand it to Apple for these iPads. They got very, very sensitive microphones in the screen, which I find kind of cool. Tim yeah. Ashworth says, perfect sound for him. Well, Tim, thank you so much, my friend. Thank you so much for, for that comment. And wow, wow. <laughs> she says, or maybe it's my energy. Well, that could be. That could be because I tell you what, I am so hot right now. Oh, my. If I could do this naked, if oh, I wouldn't. Geez. Yeah, I, exactly. If I. <laughs> <laughs> if I could be alone, you know, and, and do it naked and not cause anybody's untimely death, uh, I would. I'm just, oh, God, it's just blowing me away here. Okay. So the fourth shock, or the fourth, shock, the, the fourth kosha, or the fourth sheath of refinement um, is exceptionally important. I mean, how do you love, how do you feel about yourself? What do you see when you look in the mirror? Who do you see when you look in the mirror? Now, this is important because I'm gonna I'm gonna reach into a little level here that uh, uh, beautiful people are falling into every day. I got a call from a gentleman uh, who told me that uh, he was being attacked by entities, and uh, the entities basically told him that. Uh, they will commence a war upon him if he listens to what I tell them. These entities were telling him, these discarnate entities were telling him that I know too much. Chrisom knows too much. 
You do not go to listen to Chris and begin. If you do, we will attack you really, really strong. And they did. <laughs> because because he just he went ahead and he listened to me and the truth was given and he now understands it and he's now he's now helping his fourth kosha by loving himself as 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 consciousness that is allowed to control his body these entities were dominating him so much that he was being told to close his eyes as his foot went down on the gas pedal through busy intersections in a major metropolitan city and hitting other people, other vehicles. Think about that. And these are the people that are listening to Bashar and and Ramtha and what is that other one? Uh, Abraham. Channelers, my friends. Channelers, stay away from them. Channel your kunda. That's all you need. You've got it all right there. You don't even need to watch TV. You don't even need to watch YouTube. Just channel your kundalini and let it channel you. It's all there behind your heart and at the base of your spine. You don't need to listen to these people, these these discarnates that are so chicken shit that they can't take the birth process themselves and talk to you in their own flesh body that they've earned it, that their level of karma will allow them to do that. You know, this is so pathetic to me. Yes, I am being a bit judgmental here. I'll admit it. And I'm perfectly okay with that. You know, I see the amount of damage that these entities do to people, everything from driving people into a psych ward, everything from driving somebody into an accident that is impacting innocent people. You know, it gets me a little pissy, I have to say. Excuse my language. You know, I'm not a Vedic scholar. <laughs> I'm not Jesus. Even though, I have to say, uh, on, on Broadway in New York, you know, people were calling me out. They're going, hey, Jesus, come over here. <laughs> I swear to God, three or four times, separate people. Anyway, I'm not Jesus, so I'm going to say things like pissy. Okay, I get a little, actually, I get I get quite irritated with that. and I'm, I, I have no problem. Uh, helping people get rid of their entities. No problem with that. I'm actually, I like it. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> and they know I like it. They know enough about me to, to warn their their channelees against listening to me. And that's fine, you know, but some of them will listen and those people will be helped. And if you... If you are listening in the archives, you know, a thousand years in the future, and somehow you you have to, to listen to these archives, you go to that uh, Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com website that Glenn Ola has so graciously given into these populations of the world, and you go to that uh, more information about Chrism, and you know, I think it's about the the, the the fourth option of the menu down on the left side. You go down there, you get that picture, you print that picture out, and you look at that picture, and you just stare at it, and you let the kundalini in me come straight into you, and you begin to drive those entities out, and it works. It works. And I, you know, I'll suggest any of you who are listening to this, uh, a thousand years in the future or even right now, go over there and you take that picture. It's not so much a picture of me. I mean, actually, the picture was taken years ago. I look so different now, you know, far worse. If you think that one's bad, oh, my God. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> look into the eyes. You'll see one eye is staring right at you. One eye is kind of slightly going somewhere else. And it's the mix of that divine and that human person right there you let that kundalini into you and it will help you honor your fourth kosha the love of yourself the love of your seniority of your body the seniority of your soul to make the choices in your body it belongs to you and you alone and I don't care how these discarnates will phrase it to you You know, I finished with the human condition, but oh, yeah, 
Right, so you're channeling through somebody. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I'm not buying any of it. You know, they've been going at this since the, uh, oh, geez, in the 80s they were doing this. Rampa is from the 80s. There's another one, something with a Z. But these these entities are just basically awesomely afraid to come to a human form because they don't want to to have to meet the karma that they've developed by doing what they have done. Afraid of that karma. They're afraid. And so don't go near, don't, you know, if you hear them, if you have an activation or awakening and all of a sudden a, a voice comes to you, I am Rantha, I am uh, Abraham, you know, some exalted character. You know, they're never like, I am a ditch digger. You know, they're never like, have you noticed? They're never like that. They're not, I'm a medical assistant <laughs> from, from the, Egypt, the Egyptian times. I'm a, I'm a, a cellar worker. From primitive time, you know, they're never, they're always like some great biblical character, some great this or that, some great warrior, some hugely knowledgeable individual. It's just bullshit. That's all it is. I hope that came through okay. <laughs> ah, yes, we have a question. Uh, forgive me, caller. So here we go. Coming into a caller. Uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, here we are. Hello, caller. I hope you're not channeler. Hello? Hello? Hi. I'm channeling I'm right channel. now. <laughs> Who am That's I speaking with? That's... Yvette. Yvette. Hi, Yvette. How are you? Hi. We have an echo, but that's weird. Anyway, it doesn't oh. really matter. Um, okay. I think uh, I have a question in regards to something you just mentioned. Go ahead. You said entities. How would you know if yeah. someone had entities? Entity is a discarnate consciousness. Discarnate is kind of like Latin for without meat, so without a physical body. Now, how would you know if someone has one? Uh, if they have gone, if they, uh, if they have a level of alcoholism or drug addiction, or if they've that's been obvious, engaged. In, <laughs> what's that? I'm sorry. I would say that's would probably say that's the obvious one. Obvious. Yeah, well, I'm just kind of going through the whole menu okay. here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the the drug addiction, the 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 alcohol addiction, any kind of a chemical based addiction. Also, if they've been engaging in different uh, spiritist practices or mediumship practices, or you know, even getting into the Ouija board, like uh, Archangel Michael evidently was doing with uh, you know the messages from Michael, right? Mm -hmm. People getting into the Ouija board a little too uh, too much. Uh, but also, if if they're just hearing a voice telling them to do things, even if it's good things. You know, it's uh, funny. Go on. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's all right. Go ahead. Look, I have a friend, and I've been telling her. I know she has entities because she she says that um, if she thinks it's telepathic, but can you be – Okay, I'll just explain to you, and you can explain to me what's going on probably. Um, I've been telling her, but she's afraid of hearing. No, I don't have entities. I'm picking up telepathically. But then the messages she gets is, um, I hate you. Um, you know, uh, you're so yeah, vain. Yeah. Um, she's got entities. She's got entities. Those are the ones. That's, right. that's, that's, that's yeah. really the hallmark of that. So the, the, these are the... The aggressive entities that occupy the lower astral realm, and and when a person becomes spiritually capable of healing them, i.e., their fifth kosha is opening to a certain degree that they're able to to have that interaction. Well, the most most of them are going to come through as being extremely negative. That's it's, exactly. What is your fifth, what is the kosha? What is the fifth kosha? What is that? It's the fifth body. That would be the throat. Oh, the throat. Okay, so the third, the fifth the, chakra. Fifth chakra, that's right. I've got the it. Throat. Chakra. The, the, the essence so, of communication. And there's transmediumship channels on either side of the fontanelle, and it's often where they will also tie in to a person is through those transmedium channels. How about anything to do with the auric field being like a, a hole or depleted in some way where, again, the entities can... Yeah, you know, well, sure, sure. I mean, you know okay. that that takes us 
that takes us back to the uh, to the drug to the to the chemically yep. addicted folk. Okay. Uh, they are they are you know they are grading their auric field by participating in that, but also. You know, a lot of these people that do Reiki, and, I, and no, no offense, I mean, <laughs> Reiki people are typically, in my opinion, really good people that are just trying to find a good way to help other people. Mm-hmm. But what they're, what they're doing, though, is they're allowing, you know, healing masters of the universe to, you know, whatever that means, to plug into their hands. And this is giving, a, this is giving an entity permission to plug in and that means come through the auric field and okay. plug into a person's hands. And then, horror of horrors, they lay those hands on a sick person. Uh-huh. Oh, great. That's, that sick person has just been infected with entities because they gave the Reiki person permission to lay their hands on them. The Reiki person gave the entities permission uh-huh. to come into their body. You see? Interesting. You see the yeah, yeah, thank God I don't do Reiki. Um, yeah. uh, <laughs> um, the Reiki people have a problem with me, I'm sure. Um, that's okay. <laughs> You're just giving out information. Um, important information. How about, so if I wanted to, because I do healing work on my own, I've never uh, subscribed to like any modality really. So would you say calling in the body of Christ or some type of higher energies so that you know that? Well, What's coming through you is of divine light. Well, you know, you, you know that's that's actually absolutely that is something that you can do. Uh, what you can have, like if a person you know is having this, like your friend, for instance, say she gets tired of having this, she can say just every time they say something to her, all mm-hmm. she needs to say is, "I believe in God." I believe God. And cool. I believe in God. Okay, and then and then. What she, what she must never do is she must never engage in conversation with these entities. Okay. If they say, oh, you're so vain, she should never go, oh, I am not vain. Just right. ignore them completely. What they're going for is a, a level of recognition from the physical host mm-hmm. to, the, to the invading entity. They want that connection. They want that communication connection. Once they have that, they can dip dig deeper into into the person's fifth kosha. Okay. They're like they're like it's kind of like a cancer. They're like a cancer. Uh but in this case, the way you, you get rid of this cancer is just by ignoring it. The more it mm-hmm. it's the more it's ignored, the more it's gonna seek food elsewhere. Exactly. They want to be recognized. They want you to they want you to mess around with them because the more you mess around with them, the deeper their hooks go into you. Okay. This is what this is what will drive a person into a psych ward. Well, pretty much. I mean, every time she say, "I freaking," you know, she'll say stuff, and I'm like, "Okay, when do you want to really take care of this problem? I mean, when do you really want to get real?" I mean, she'll do all these exercises to. That maybe keeps something at bay for a while, and then this it gets worse every like the next cycle is even more harsher. Exactly, exactly. And so the scenario is you don't fight fire with fire mm-hmm. in, in in with an entity. You just ignore them and you let the fire die out. Without yeah. without giving them attention, their fire is low. Their, the attention that you give them is the food that they require. As you dry up the food source, they go away. All right. Now, 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 okay, now you're going to get in all these people, and there's some people online that I won't even mention. They're going to go, well, what you're going to do, Yvette, is you got to get, you know, some olive oil and make sure it's virgin, free, ways, free, free range, breastfed olive oil. And you got to get some coconut oil, and you got to get snow from the Andes, and it can only be snow from the Andes. And you got to mix all the oil and the snow together, put it on top of the person's head, and you got to sleep that way until it melts. <laughs> right. They got all kinds of recipes out there for doing that, mm-hmm. and uh, none of it will really work. But it's the the person's <laughs> it's the person's belief that it will work, that will help them the most. But the most important thing to do is just to say, I believe in God. 
they are not God, so they know they're not God. The entities know they are not God. Right. And, right. you know, God just, you know, God is the ultimate force, you know. I, you could even say, I believe in Amakua, which is the, the Kuna word for the, for the Kundalini, the two that are one. I believe in Kundalini. You could say, I believe in Chrism. They hate me. Right. <laughs> Can I ask you another question? Yeah. Um, so, in meditation, this is, I'm sure, obviously, you're a teacher and you know the Kundalini. How do you use the Kundalini to manifest money? Uh, you don't. You don't you use don't. Kundalini okay. to manifest money. Okay, I you, didn't think so. It's probably, yeah, yeah, it's a little yeah. energy that, probably. I mean, what you could do, what you can do with that, and here's, let me give you my story, then, and I apologize for those who have heard this story before, is that I had about $42 to my name. And uh, my friend came to me in this in this restaurant I was eating at, and, and he said, "Hey, Chris, there's this new Indian casino opening up. Uh, I want to go, and I want you to come with me. We always have a good time when we're together." So he wanted to uh-huh. take me, and I said, "I said absolutely not, Charles. I'm not going to an Indian casino. I got forty two dollars. What am I going to do? Play the penny machine? You know, which I would never do." And he says, oh, he says, don't worry, don't worry, let's just go, come on, let's go. So I was about ready to say no again, and then I felt the kundalini pull my fourth chakra, my fourth kosha, pulled me towards him, and it did it three times. Mm-hmm. And I said, I said to myself, oh, this is, this is not normal, but I'm, it's telling me to go. Okay, fine. So I went. And I gambled my $42, and I walked out of that casino with over $5,000. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Well, that's, that's the kundalini. Now, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. I've played the lottery. I don't win the lottery. Okay, I've, I've played. I've gone, to, I've gone to the casino a few times, and I win a lot sometimes, but I've also lost some too. And the thing is, is you can only go uh, into a situation as you're guided by the kundalini. You must wait for that guidance. I don't care if you wait for a decade, but mm-hmm. if you go there just out of the the the, the sheer desire, the ego based uh, desire to have more money, then your chances are as good as anyone else. Got it. Got it. Okay. Now, also in making money, the Kundalini may just tell you to get a different job. It may help you get that different job. Mm-hmm. Okay, it may help you understand that. Oh my gosh, a vet! You, you know, you you may need to sell that Corvette and get a, a Honda. Mm-hmm. You know, you may, I mean, it will help you reorganize your life, reorganize your kosha experience with life, in order to manifest more money in your life. It will definitely. I've seen it help people with jobs. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. But the problem is, is the person typically has an ideology of what job is best for them. You know, it's what they've gone to school for. It's what their parents want them to do, you know, all of this stuff. And, the, you know, we'll just say it's an MD. You know, the MD wants to be a doctor. He wants to work at a hospital. He wants to get a new, you know, he wants to do that life. And the Kundalini will say, oh, no, no, you need to become a janitor. Mm-hmm. And the MD is going, that's not going to happen. But the janitor could be that one person that that is cleaning a certain room and, and a certain level of information comes to them and boom, they're extremely wealthy. Maybe they're cleaning, a, you know, the building of a stockbroker and they find a piece of paper in the trash can that says, you know, buy, uh, buy Kundalini Awakening Systems one stock. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. I know. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I mean, it can help you get money that way. It just won't. Mm-hmm. It won't. It just won't go. Oh, Kundalini, give me gold bullion, and you know, you know, gold. I know it has more heaven. integrity than that. I know it has more integrity than that. <laughs> but others don't. So, right. Yeah. Remember, other people are going to be listening to this. You know, and they're going to have that expectation. Believe me, that I get right. asked these right. questions almost every day. Yeah. Chris, how do I get money? How do I solve my life, my worldly circumstances? How do I get powers that will give me money or that will make me a hero? You know? So I know you're not that way, but I get a lot of folks that are. Well, I appreciate your time. 
You're very welcome, my dear, and I appreciate you calling in. Yeah, I'm going to continue to listen. All right, all right. And anybody else that would like to call in, the number is 347 347 934 0026. You know, and you know, if this is very important, I'm glad Yvette called up because you know, she described, and you notice, you notice, I didn't give her any encouragement about, you know, oh, did the entity say this or did the entity say that? Not at all. You know, her friend is having the real deal. Her friend is inside of being possessed by entities. And and this is a this is also a fourth kosher level. It's the level of love that you show for yourself, the level of love that, and confidence that you show for what it is you are, a human being inside of this amazing, beautiful spiritual evolutionary experience. You know, there are no shortcuts. You don't get to go to Ramtha or Abraham and go, oh, okay. You know, and you get a step up on everybody. Now, you know, granted, those channels, those channelers have made a lot of money doing that. But they haven't made a lot of evolution doing that. Okay, matter of fact, they've probably taken themselves down a few notches by doing that. Okay. Uh, so, So realize that within the level of of the fourth chakra, the fourth kosha, the fourth sheath. You know, you are the one that takes the responsibility for the choices you make. Uh, As you approach the kundalini, after the kundalini, you are also going to be held to your responsibilities with regards to what the kundalini is teaching you, i.e., being more compassionate, being more loving, being more tolerant, being more patient, being extremely truthful. You know, not, you know, marrying yourself to a a system of Reiki that is just basically a level of self-delusion. Oh, my kundalini told me that I'm Jesus now, and therefore you all have to, like, read Bible quotes to me. But only the ones that I like to hear. Okay. You know, that's, that's ridiculous. Kundalini's not going to do that to you. You, however, may do that to yourself. Okay. And and the kundalini will try to correct you, or it will let you kind of swim in your own soup for a while. You hear a lot, you know, people having the, the spinal sweep come up and over them, and, and all of a sudden they're just, oh, oh, yes. Oh, I'm so, I'm holy now. Yes, I'm a holy man. I'm you know, you, everybody listen to me. I, I I have the answer to the world's problems, and and you just you must come to me for these answers. And and oh yes, you can bow if you want, scrape if you want. You know, throw money. That's always good. No, no, that's the ego that is being exalted, and that is the person allowing their ego to be exalted. And the kundalini will once again eventually step in. It will step in, and it will begin to realign that person's awakening equation. Now, we never kill the ego. We don't hurt the ego. We just redirect the ego's attention to the areas that it most that it is most uh, capable at, at understanding. A part of that is the maintenance of the body, which would go back to the first and second kosha. Okay. The Vedic scholars will tell you, oh, obliterate the ego. Get rid of it. Oh, my God. And the Kundalini awakening person will go, no, 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 no. We practice ahimsa with Kundalini. We do not kill things. We retrain things. We change their vector of interaction with us. Okay? The ego is not to be killed. It's just to be retrained. And this is also a part of the fourth kosha. Fourth kosha is huge. It's huge. But as we move from the fourth kosha into the fifth kosha, you know, this is that element of exalted, expanded communication. This is where narrow band and broad band telepathic uh, impulses will begin to be discerned. And this is where a person can get in trouble with entities that will couch themselves as some great and an honorable historical figure, you know, Aristotle or or uh, uh, some 
some Catholic saint or you know what I mean. I mean somebody who's who is is very big in the history books and oh they're just they're not quite finished aiding and sustaining humanity and they want to do it you know from a spiritual form. But I you know will need to use your body. Is that okay? Do you mind? It'll be okay, you know. It'll be gentle for you, <laughs> whatever. And then once they're in, you know, once they're in, they're really hard to release, and and uh, they will they will drive you through a busy intersection and cause you to have traffic accidents with perfectly innocent people, people that didn't get to make the decision on whether or not they wanted to have an entity come into you and run into them in an intersection. You can see the unfairness of that. <laughs> okay, so the fifth coach, fifth coach is very important. Don't believe everything that pops into your mind, especially if it has that signature of hurtfulness that Yvette's friend was hearing. You know, you're so vain, you're ugly, you're horrible. Don't look at yourself in the mirror. Break the mirror. Take that shard and hurt yourself with it or hurt somebody else with it. And this is seriously, I'm not kidding you. This, they get that way. They get that way. Do you love your wife? Would you die for her? Really? Show us. Prove it. You know, that type of thing. You know, they'll you and 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 since you've let them into your mind, they can kind of like like a you know, like a computer file. They can kind of go through those files in your mind and say, Oh, your mother's in the hospital. Oh, oh, and it's your fault. You know, the only reason she's there is because she loved you so much and you never returned that love and you were so pathetic. This is the type of conversation that they will give to a person. And a person who is not used to this information, who is not informed of their fifth kosher, will begin to believe it because there's certain levels of guilt that we all have. And those buttons can be expressly visible to spiritual entities, or I should say, I shouldn't call them spiritual entities, discarnates. Discarnates can see that sometimes, so it's important not to just believe, not to believe anything of a negative quality that you hear about someone else or that you hear about yourself from an undefined source within your head. Do not buy into it. You let your fifth kosha remain as pure and fixated on your kundalini awakening process, your positive, your positivity your love, your grace, your beauty, your joy, and all of those qualities of grace, beauty, and joy, and positivity that you can see in other people. And that's all you look at for a while. Believe me. You know, I, I'll, you know, I say honor the shadow. You've got to honor the shadow, but not right now. You can honor the shadow later. Right now you honor the positivity, especially as you're coming into the kundalini. Because the kundalini expands everything. It amplifies your thoughts and your feelings and your conclusions. It amplifies them. Okay. Now, after you've had the spinal sweep, and you're inside of the uh, of the uh, of the awakening process, the koshas take on a very, very different meaning. They become inhabited by the inner divine. And Believe me, I'm talking about the inner divine. I'm not talking about entities. I'm not talking about discarnates. I'm not talking about lower astral forms. I'm talking about the divine. I'm talking about that which will give you uncontrolled amounts of bliss. I'm talking about uh, Ananda Mayakoshi, I believe is the Sanskrit term that they talk about with that. Okay. The divine aspect of a person is beyond infection, spiritually or otherwise. Divinity is coaching you now. And you just need to learn the language, hearing it and feeling it and allowing it to move through you, paying attention to it, letting it sculpt you into that beautiful, beautiful semi-divine light upon this world. And darkness is not evil. Darkness is what every seed or most of the seeds on this planet are, are, are planted in darkness. Darkness is not evil. It's just another aspect of the polarity. 
as I said before, evil has no color. It is about as bland as it gets. It just, you know, it, it gives you false promises. And it never shares power. Kundalini gives you power. doesn't suck it away from you. Now, those of you going through the awakening process, yeah, 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 you may feel lethargic. You may feel... Uh, you know, like 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 your life is being turned upside down, and indeed it may be, but that's not because the, the kundalini is hurting you in any way. It's because you're not feeding your koshas correctly. You have to begin to turn your life over just the way the kundalini is forcing you to do. You need to take that clue. Take the clue. It will never, ever tell you to leave your kids or to leave your spouse unless the spouse is beating you or hurting you in some way. And that means, you know, taking you to a psych ward because your spouse doesn't understand your kundalini. That is indeed interrupting your kundalini process. But if a spouse is supporting you, if your children are supporting you with your kundalini awakening, it will never tell you to stop it. It will never tell you to end it. It may tell you to toughen up. It may tell you to toughen up and help you. Because you got to remember that your current process is not the end of your process. It's just part of the journey. It's a step on the journey. One step out of a billion steps. One step. So don't think that the way things are currently are the way things are always going to be. Well, they're not. One of the biggest uh, uh, aspects of the kundalini is transformation. Transformation translates into change. Okay? Understand that. Feed your koshas well. The sixth chakra and the second chakra are different. Those are divine areas of interaction. Those that, That's part of that divine self. Now, the transmedium channels are up there so that you can also... Communicate and the, and the divinity will also communicate through the transmedium channels as well, as well as uh, uh, discarnate uh, teachers of an exalted status. You know, people that uh, that are not trying to possess you; they're just trying to help you, teach you. People that will tell you to to bend down and pick up a stick as a bullet is fired over your head and would have hit you if you had not bent down and picked up that stick. People who are interested in, in your welfare, people that are interested in your divine welfare, and understand. Uh, and I and I, I say people, but these are these are people that are kind of like evolved into the angelic to some degree, or a divine human, a divine human. You with the Kundalini, you're coming in to your divine humanity. These people have already been there for a while. They're there to help. But they typically won't inflict themselves on you. They will not inflict themselves on you. They will just appear and tell you to pick up that stick, knowing what's going to happen. Big difference between saying, I am I am a, a rugby man and, and I am going to take over your body, but we'll do some really good things. No, 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 no. These exalted guides will not do that. They will not inflict themselves on you. They'll, you know, you can always say, no, I'm not going to pick up that stick. And then boom. <laughs> now, how do you feel about this, Amanda? Thank you very much, Chris. And it's been really um, informative. Some of it I've known um, without a doubt, but some of this is new for me. Some of this has expanded what I, you know, I have come to know through the Kundalini, through your teaching, and through my own experience. So I'm going to be listening to this again, um, without a doubt. I wanted to ask you about the sequences, though, of the different, you know, sequentially, um, one, two, three, four, the, the five different. Are they done sequentially? No, or no, no. Pinning? It is not okay. sequential at all. Typically, it will happen all at the same time. What is sequential is how you uh, feed your bodies of expression, how you feed the koshas. Uh, you know, 
But even you, at the same time, you're thinking certain thoughts of love, and, and you're thinking those thoughts of love, and you're eating a banana, and you're having a water, you know, a nice glass of beautiful, crystal clean, Irish sparkling water. And at the same time, you're kind of looking out the window, and the sunlight is scintillating off the off the wet leaves or the wet grass. I mean, so it's happening to you all at the same time as well. The kundalini will, will mirror this. The kundalini will also reflect things, and these will happen all at the same time. Now, I have about 13 minutes left. Is there anybody that has a question? Please call 347-934-0026. And, uh, and we will... We will Answer the question as as, as best we can. Um, I would like to to encourage everybody to if you, if you like the program, if you like any of the conversations that we've had here, we have probably over a hundred of them now. If you like the program, spread it around the internet. Put it on Reddit. Put it on Yahoo. Put it on Facebook. Put it on on any any of the of the uh, channels or the or the uh, the the networks that you like to use uh some of you put it on YouTube I encourage you to do this we're not making money here we're not trying to make money here we're trying to give truthful information about the kundalini out and I have a caller here so here we are here we are hello caller this is Chris M. how are you and hello, Master C. Oh, my gosh. There's the voice, the voice of God. <laughs> How are you, Pasty? I am well. I am well. I, I am enjoying this, this show immensely. I did have uh, some questions, though. Okay. Um, what you got? Uh, well, on. one, perhaps. The koshas, are they... Uh, in direct correlation with the various bodies that that act as sheaths around yeah. the soul or the atma or whatever. Yeah, 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 absolutely. You know, if you're going Okay. Yeah, I try to I try to keep the the Vedic terminology to a minimum because I know most people are not Vedic scholars. Right. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. Like 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 you said. And they correspond to the chakras in the physical, or I guess the chakras aren't actually in the physical, are they? Um, they're, they're, they well, are and they aren't. They're kind of like there and not there at the same time. But they, there are certain aspects of them, yeah, that correspond directly with that. But they also correspond to their own level of of, uh, of refinement. Uh, within the the exalted awakening process, but I have to start at I have to start at the at the most simplest areas. I can't. Just, of course. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I was I was kind of sitting over here saying, hmm, really? Yeah. Yeah. And for people for people that have a Vedic understanding, such as you, Fashji, uh you understand the the Atman, and you understand. Uh, at least you understand, I think, uh, what I was uh, talking about with regard to Sri Aurobindo uh, sure. and his his take on it. And uh, so, so, and, and I, 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 I've i written about this recently on Facebook as well uh, with a, with another gentleman there who is a a, uh, a staunch uh, Satanan, Santana. Yes. Yes, I saw that. And, uh, yes. You know, I was, I was getting fairly into the technical aspects of it then, but you know, and this is what kind of galvanized me to to, to use this as part of the program is simply because uh, the koshas and the and the bodies do have a relationship, and once you come into the enlightenment process, your your refinement patterns do not stop, but they change, mm-hmm. they trans right along with the kundalini and you begin to to work on opening the flower of the atman itself mm-hmm. and the driving force of that is the divine mm-hmm. the human divine as as uh, Sri Aurobindo mentioned the human divine 
will begin to coordinate and to work through those those different um, koshas and, and the purusha and, and right. the, prush, the purushic field and all of those things will also have an interplay with them. And and now I know, folks, I'm getting into terms that uh, that you're not uh, going to be familiar with, but that's okay. Look at look up purusha, P-A-R-U-S-H-A. And uh, you'll see what, it, what uh, some, you know, there will be many different meanings for the same word. You know, one Vedic scholar will say it's this. But if I were you, I would listen to what the Kundalini Awakened scholar has to say. Yes. Yes. My, 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 whole, my whole understanding of this has, has changed dramatically from what it was before. Um, well, see, so you've and, had the benefit of, of your. You've had the benefit of going out of body for many, many, many years. Right. You have, you, you have an understanding that that you know this body is only part of of our of our divine expression. It is not the whole thing. There is plenty more to go. And and let me. Can I ask you if you're still astral projecting? Um, I actually don't. Um, I. As a child, I, I did astral projection. Um, a fellow, and I'm gonna, this is an aside, but a fellow had mentioned that that was a seven and a half foot tall uh, being that um, one of the posts on, on one of the, the sites uh, that was all black and was wearing a hat. Well, I had a similar experience as a child right before I started to, to do astral projection. But I do um, what is known as soul travel, which you know is a part of my past. And sure. It, it it is is a lot more faster and a lot more cleaner than trying to do astral projection. I you know it allows the uh, one the ability to to go and to a particular plane of consciousness, if you will, and assume that body. So it, it's not limited to the astral zone because right. the astral no, body. Understood. understood. Okay. Sure, sure. Okay. Now, are so, you still are you are you still doing that? Is that something that you're doing? I personally have been doing a, a, a deep meditation on the Kundalini. I've been allowing the Kundalini mm-hmm. to to take charge of of my experience instead of trying well, that, to. That is excellent. What you what you what I'm hearing you say is that. You are allowing your inner divine to begin to sculpt your evolutionary process. Exactly, exactly, awesome. exactly. Awesome. So, that in, is exactly. in during my meditation practices, I I call upon the Kundalini within me to to join with soul, and then allow whatever happens from that point to happen. That is excellent. That is the way we. That's what I like to hear, my friend. Well, I, and and I thank you for your time. And I'm going to get out of the way because I know right at the mm-hmm. end, people. I just, people I'm glad I got to hear your voice again. Thank you. <laughs> it's always a pleasure to talk with you. Hello, you. Amelia. <laughs> Hello, Fashi. I'm always glad to hear your voice. <laughs> you take care. Maybe I will get me a job as a disc jockey, huh? <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> All right. Good to hear you both. Bye bye. Thank you, Fuzz. Bye bye. Um, so, uh, Amelia, you have some announcements you wanted to repeat. I have indeed. Thank you, Prism. I would like to give you again the um, address that you can go to if you would like to support Prism and the work that he does. And the address is www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.ie. No, 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 that's dot dot com. Dot com. Dot com. Dot com. Dot com. We're, in, we're in Irish now. We're in Ireland now, so it would be, it's IE here. Yes, so it's, so I, I give it to you again. It's www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. And on the upper right-hand corner, there's a donate button, and that's where you can go to give a donation. Thank you. Well, thank you, Amelia, for making that announcement. You can also uh, sign up if you want to join that site. There's 30 people on it right now, on a bunch of the writings that I have on there. Also, if you could, spread this around the Internet. Let's help some people, folks. Let's help some people. 
there are a lot of people, gosh, you know, I just... I was just getting called the other day, you know, the guy in, you know, in in, in California, and, and there, you know, there are thousands of people that are being put in psych wards or, you know, being driven crazy because of Kundalini phenomena that they don't understand. Remember, information is power. Information is helpfulness. Information can save lives. Let's give them some information. Spread it around, my friends. Spread it around. Please, I implore you. That's a wonderful service that we could all do, that you could do, that you could partake of, and it's something that would, you know, we would really, really welcome you doing. Um, and what a benefit for other people because we can't reach everywhere, so the more people that spread, spread the links and pass it on, the better. So, yeah, excellent. Yeah, I agree, I agree. Um, so, yeah, you know, Everybody who's listening, if you've enjoyed the show, either now or in the future, you know, spread this information out. Spread any of the, I, you know, spread any of the conversations that you feel are, are, are have been important to you or maybe helpful to you. Like Yvette, you know, if you if you if you know a person that's having an entity, you know, then give them this information for crying out loud. You have a call, Susan. I think. I don't think so. No. No. Okay. Can we just say hello to Elizabeth? She logged in. Hi, Elizabeth, in the chat room. Uh, hello, Elizabeth. Nice Tim. to see you and Tim Ashworth. And Rosemary, I see that you're called in again. Rosemary, nice to hear you or to see you there. Fasty, of course. And Julie. And Julie and guest 1749 and guest 1879. Thank you all. Thank you all for joining us on this, this special program. And please do your best to spread it around. Um, you know, nobody's going to make money off of this. Matter of fact, a million or husband are paying money to have this come out. So let's let's let them get their money's worth, shall <laughs> you? You know, let's let's get some people helped with this. And uh, yeah. and, and I want to thank you all for listening. And I'd like to say good night to you, Amelia. Good night, everybody, and good night, Chrism, and safe traveling as you continue and leave Ireland, and um, look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you, everyone.